I was really thinking about because a lot of people are like it, things aren't happening happening fast enough. You know, the volume could be better and everything. But I like to think of it. You know, you guys, can you make a cake by just throwing water, yeast, and uh, eggs all in it, and then like throwing it in to a, a, a cold oven and heating up? No, there's like a process, right? You got to build it. There's certain things that gotta be prepared, right? And right now. You guys got to remember, this is only like three months, 100 days into it, 90 days, right? And we've already got a lot of, you know, things built on it. But we understand, you guys want more volume? Guess what's going to happen when Liquid Loan opens up, when uh, Power City opens up, right? With po Portal X, you know, boom, there's going to be a lot of activity opens up. We've got an on-ramp. How many chains do you know that have an on-ramp other than like straight up on-ramp? You guys, when these open up, it's going to create more pools. There's going to be a lot more action, a lot more volume going on. And then guess what happens? Fiat opens up. Now we've got an Ave fork on here, right? Now the whales can start uh, doing their thing, you know, um, but it's going to take time too for them to earn, you know, the trust, which they should already have because of Ethereum, right? Now, and then guess what happens? Famous opens up. Now we got a GMX port. You guys, give it time. You know, the, we, we're not going to get everything right now. And I know it can be frustrating. We may have set for ourselves, but just realize only some of the stuff is open so far. And the, and these, these, uh, these apps had to um, let the chain mature a little bit before they can actually get their set up. You know, the Oracle, we got a, a decentralized Oracle coming on. These are big deals. There's not a lot of chains out there that can say the same thing. Thanks. And Thanks. just keep these in, in mind, you guys. Um, you know, it's, this chain's going to be completely different in a good way within the next two months. It's it's You guys, I look forward and I see that there's going to be some really exciting things going on. But at the same, t same time, there's going to be a lot of new shiny objects too because of it. But these things are going to bring people with them as well. So just don't forget about, you know, over the next two months, there's going to be good things happening. Don't forget about these. But at the same time, there's nothing wrong with continuing to build that foundation that we all want of more people, of, of more reasons for people to be here, of more education, you know, um, more security, you know. But at the same time, there's people like maybe me that are really trying to buy as much hopefully having as long as I can to continue buying and building bags, right? You know, there's opposite people here too. So just keep these things in mind, you guys. There's advantages to everything that's going on right now, but we, I sure want to know, I want to recognize the people that are building and that are marketing this and doing what they can with their own fund and their own reputation and their own energy to build um, a more more of a, a foundation of people that are coming to F Pulse Chain because you guys, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, um, don't be dependent on others, but we are depending on you guys. And we really do appreciate what you guys are doing. So um, if you feel neglected, I'm sorry. But I want to make sure that you guys know that we really do appreciate what you guys are doing or trying to do. Because we know that most of you have uh, the best of intentions. Well, well said. I appreciate it. The reason why Polygon, Optimism, and ZK Sync and Arbitrum are ahead of us is because they're just spamming bots to get volume. Yeah, yeah. I understand where we're at the markets. I understand a macro versus a micro and he's kind of micro focused is macro is like the adoption ratio worldwide is like you know less than five percent just under five percent so even if we double that right you know which i think you know in five years we'll get to like 50 percent um that's kind of a long-standing prediction but i mean think about the economics of that so it's an easy, very easy thing for me to say that I believe that uh, as long as you have strong hands, you're going to make it. Um, if you're not one of those people that sell the bottoms and buy the tops, you'll be okay. You know, um, don't come into the crypto market expecting that you know you're just going to make overnight gains, three week gains, that type of thing. I mean, what? It's been 96 days since. Uh, Hex, or excuse me, since PLS has launched, Pulse Chain um, may be off by a day. But, uh, you know, ultimately it's like, come on. You know, like people are willing to come in and argue. I mean, Bitcoin's been around for, what, 14 years, you know, and you're going to come in and argue and like kick rocks at like a chain that started up under four months. Come on. That's awesome, man. I'm, I'm still building around Pulse Chain, like uh, in my spare time, so. Got a few ideas, um, like which involve hex and pulse chain uh, and ink as well. So they try and reduce the supply of ink, create an incentive. I know, I know, it's um, rumours uh, about it being uh, the um, governance token. I'm not 100 percent sure on that yet, but um, I think uh, reducing the overall supply as we've got the you know the high inflation in these early days would be quite a cool idea. 
but you know it depends on the incentives and all that stuff and you know whether it's sustainable that's, that's another that's another question and if it and if we pump the price of ink then the apys go up on the farm so that's always good yeah we still have the biggest 1.2 million watcher guru still supports pulse chain like that'll be okay it's good to see we're still getting support even through the you know these crazy times so that's 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 one thing i see the, the differences with the hex community and the pulse chain community since this sec stuff it seems to have just been like people are going harder you know what i mean i mean there's a lot of people capitulating to get me wrong but yeah the stress test is really the people who are embracing it are really uh gonna enjoy this 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 run yeah i agree Post, I Post agree. chain's about to have thirty-eight thousand non-genesis validators to protect the network amongst anything so no matter what happens to richard god willing he gets out of this good we're gonna be fine and we have so many more protocols like coming online it's gonna be okay and that's not like shooting shunshine up your ass it'll be fine because aside from matcha and made a mask no one's left no one's left they see the potential here like there's a list of like 20 or 30 outside the united states protocols that like still support pulse chain and they're used by hundreds upon hundreds of millions of people yeah um about onboarding, especially the conversation. Obviously, many of us talk about DeFi. I saw there's different people that made tweets about, you know, um, I think Somi made something earlier today. It was about how Bitcoiners claim that they're the most decentralized. But, you know, the truth in my mind, at least my truth, is nobody cares really about decentralization, even Bitcoin maxis, because they're not, uh, you know, having bought at a penny or a hundred dollar Bitcoin or three hundred dollar Bitcoin. And then when they go to buy Starbucks or pay for dinner, they're not redeeming it for a penny a uh, hundred dollars or three hundred they're redeeming it for more than that so like the idea about decentralization where everybody on the planet eight billion people all share the same you know whether it's a token or a coin or whatever you know it's in some kumbaya it just isn't isn't true um so you know there still needs to be to me in this onboarding process you know you can set uh, I, I when i talk to people i'm talking trying to say here are realistic uh things that have happened in crypto in the past if you take the middle band as far as like the the super blow off tops that become crashes and things never come back like you have to explain some of the the financial truths of what happens in this speculative uh you know industry and uh you know even the reaction to the sec or uh you know vitalik gets hit by a bus or uh you know bank of america says we're not no, none of our customers can ever uh off ramp or on ramp like these are or china says we're going to stop you know anything is proof of work like these are things that we have to emotionally go through but we're in it because uh, it's not kumbaya. Everybody has one DeFi, you know, um, same uh, store of value. Even the store of value narrative to me is is not true um, because you see these things go down 85, 95%. You see them go up, uh, you know, 100x. So the store of value narrative uh, doesn't really work for anybody that I talk to, especially as far as real estate people. So like I'm, I'm really listening to the room, not for us to kind of soothe each other, but like where are the 900,000 other people? Uh, because really the network effect is all that really affects the price. Uh, and how are we outreaching, uh, you know, above and beyond our own hashtags? That's really the only reason I'm in the room. But Gary, my answer to this is, is probably not an answer that, uh, that people like to hear too much but it, it it's really we we slow down that I mean, that sounds crazy but you know our our time horizons are extremely important so let's play to that let's slow down and let's make each person that we talk to about this let's have a quality conversation about why we're doing this and and you know a, a lot of people talk about hey it's all about making money okay and 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 that's fine, but I think the money comes as a result of treating each person like a, an actual human being and empowering that person and, and giving something to that person um, that's going to make them more knowledgeable about the system that they live in and, and more knowledgeable about the you know what's happening above their pay grade, I guess. And if, if we can treat people that way, it's gonna. I, I think it gives people a hunger to learn more, and I think that the community grows. Uh, I think it grows more slowly, um, but I think it grows more soundly. And it's not something that really anybody else in crypto does. It's all, it's everybody's, it's a race. It's an attention race. It's like who can uh, get who on Twitter, who can, who can meme somebody else better on Twitter, who can trash talk somebody better on Twitter, who can get, uh, you know, it, look, there's 8,000 wallets. Okay, now the next day, the, look, we're at 15,000 wallets. Okay, 100,000 wallets now. 150,000 wallets. Go, 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 go. But what about the people? 
there's there's no emphasis on the people. So I think if we if we slow down, if we really focus and we really adopt these core principles, then the price will go up as a result of focusing on those things. So that's it's really my philosophy on it. And to the idea that Gary brought up, you know, how do we get other people from other communities involved with us? Well, one of the most interesting things about this is there's kind of a slippery slope here. And I think it hasn't been really brought to the forefront yet. But it's super important because if the SEC can go after Pulse Chain, then it's a real easy leap to then go get uh, Ethereum. And after you get Ethereum, you get Bitcoin game over. So there's actually a lot of support that probably hasn't been granted yet. And I'm hopeful that if I can find the right way to build a privacy wall behind a uh, amicus brief, that we can get a whole bunch of people, not just in the Pulse Hex community, but also in other DeFi communities to support our case. I think we're important. I think it doesn't matter if you like or don't like Richard Hart. So that's number one. Number two, we're at a unique point in crypto history. Um, I don't have 100% a grip on how the highest of stakes is doing in its markets that it's in. I do see some positive things. I saw that uh, London just sold out, which is kind of cool. But all this is bringing awareness to DeFi. Maybe in a positive light, maybe not. But it's putting us in the Pulse Chain community right in the center of the spotlight. So we probably should leverage that as well. And and if anybody wants me to get into it, you did a great presentation, Rags, on you know with that uh, lawyer about what we're vulnerable with. I think we have some strengths. And I'll leave it to the group here. But if anybody wants me to go through it, I'll... I'll tell you what I think are our strongest points. We should so, explain what an amicus brief is to yeah, uh, sure. people that don't know. Oh, thanks. It's it's a friend of the court. So it's a ability uh, at some point in a court case to let yourself be heard. Now, if we don't, and by the way, th- let me just throw the negative out there right now. That means at least to a court, you have to say, my name is this, my address is this, my email is this, and maybe even a phone number you can reach me at. Now, as DeFi crypto investors, we're not real keen on that. Um, Think about it. I'm speaking to uh, rags to riches and uh, hexy Quinn. So, (laughs) you know, that's the way we do things. But my idea is that if we create a privacy wall, then what happens is here's the amicus brief. You go behind that wall and the only place that your information will be delivered is to a court. So now the problem. I think there's probably more context behind Amicus Brief. Uh, So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for folks, uh, an Amicus Brief just it's I think it's Latin for a friend of the court, like we like you said, and it's think about an ongoing ongoing court case, and you have, for example, a bunch of professors who are experts in whatever field is being uh, you know deliberated and they write an amicus brief which is their opinion it could be uh, university scholars it could be professionals but they write their opinion to the court in an official document for whoever is uh, considering um, considering that court case so that's what he means by that uh, go ahead Danny yeah and uh, there's something to the idea that we all are stakeholders in this case even though our name is not Richard Schuler, Richard Hart. We, we're not that person. But I ask you guys, <clears throat> are you collectively affected by the SEC action? And <laughs> like you guys are saying, we're wrecked as a group. And that is in large measure due to the SEC. Now, if we sit on our hands and we don't say anything and we wait for Uncle Richard to you know, save the day, possibly we get defined by the SEC. And the SEC says, uh, for lack of a better term, we're just a bunch of dumb idiots. We don't know what we're doing, and they're there to save us. And their definition of saving us is to basically freeze the pulse chain to the extent they can hex. I doubt they can, but whatever, if they got their way, if they could wave a magic wand, we would all be dumb investors. They would save us. They'd give us pennies on the dollar as they drain uh, the the ecosystem for whatever they can get and whatever they can get out of Richard and that becomes our return which is probably less than we've invested and we are thankful to the wonderful SEC for saving us now that's if we do nothing the challenge is that we have to do something with a court we have to stand up and say here's who I am I'm not trying to hide this is my legal name here's how you can reach me 
but we don't necessarily have to make that public. And that's why we all have names uh, on here that may not be our actual name. And that's fine. But what I would ask of everybody in the Pulse community, once this thing is set up and, and the Hex community, is read it, make sure you agree with it. And if you do, stand up and be counted by going behind a privacy wall and typing in your information, and that will be presented to the court. And I don't think you can be any worse off than you are now. Because unless you are the founder of a blockchain, you are not the target. You are the quote unquote victim. So what are our arguments? Well, number one, we sacrificed for freedom of speech and freedom of assembly collectively. Now, the argument is wink, wink, not nod. You guys knew what you were doing. You were expecting something in return uh, solely from the work of actually Richard Hart because that's who the others are identified in this case. So if we were not expecting something in return solely from the work of Richard Hart only and nothing else, then sure. But I don't want to be defined that way. That's number one. Number two, there is a Supreme Court case from 1976. It's Busley, Buxley, excuse me, Buckley versus Vallejo. And that was a Supreme Court case involving money and freedom of speech. And the U.S. Supreme Court determined in that case that uh, freedom of speech is money. And it was a political deal. They were saying that, uh, you know, somebody couldn't influence a political uh, opinion or something too much in one direction because they had too much money in it. And that wasn't fair. And the Supreme Court came back and said, oh, yes, it is. As a matter of fact, money equals speech. And so if you were sacrificing because you believed in freedom of speech, amongst other things, okay? but that's key that you did believe in freedom of speech, then when you also sacrifice for freedom of assembly, you were talking about freedom of assembly. And the SEC is going to say, well, no, you weren't. You knew that that wasn't going to happen. And in, in fact, Richard Hart bought Gucci items. And our retort to that is, guess what? If freedom of speech is money, I can go out and burn my money in the street if I wish to, because I want to say that I don't like the U.S. financial system. That's my prerogative. So I think we can actually support that, and that is the argument against a wink and a nod and so forth and so on with a sacrifice. So that's number one. Number two, I think any of us, any of us in this ecosystem would all have to agree that Richard promised us absolutely nothing. He went to great pains in some cases to not promise us anything. We got nothing for four days because we weren't even connected to a fiat system. We didn't really invest. What we did in our ecosystem is we buy and we sell a commodity which is called Pulse Chain, Pulse X, or Hex. That's what we do, an incentive token. We consider them commodities. We do not consider them investors. And finally, we are not a bunch of idiots. As a matter of fact, this particular, uh, want to call us a cold, I don't care, whatever you call us, we have more knowledgeable people. I think about people like Gary and you, Rags, and, and Quinn and Crypto Harpy. You guys are intellectual people. You are not. Yeah. Do we have a few loud mouths? Of course we do. But my point is, we are not a bunch of potted plants sitting there just getting watered by Richard pissing on us. That's not who we are. That's the way the SEC says that's who we are. And if we all keep quiet and we don't stand up for our rights, then we're letting them define us. And that's where I think the key is. And that also applies to other communities, not just our own. Yeah, dude, I, you know, I, I completely agree. As, as I was listening to as I was listening to to Crypto Bitlaw and and for for those of you who didn't know, like I, I talked to him beforehand and I said, I want you to let us have it. So a lot of people were really upset about that. And I said, I would just want I want the truth. Um, I may have may not may or may not mention I want worst case scenario, but I wanted to paint a solid picture of of what we're up against. The SEC uh, is going to come at us with all those angles, or at least some of those angles that he talked about. And I would rather people hear it from one of us before they saw it, you know, on a CoinDesk website or something when when the SEC moves forward. But the thing that I like about what you're talking about, Danny, is I think it's uh, incredibly important for anybody who has any type of connection to, to people who would know where to put pressure the best I think that we need to do that. I'm in the process of brainstorming that too with a couple of folks. Uh, so yes, Amicus brief behind some type of privacy wall with people signing off on it. You get 
you know, 10,000 people that, that are signing off on this thing and, and that represents their views and thoughts. Uh, and, it can't hurt uh, at all. Um, I don't really think that the SEC at this point, based on their actions, are in any way trying to be logical or have any sort of sound reasoning. I think that there is something that we don't know about why all of these actions are taking place. And ultimately, I think it boils down to government or governmental control over the financial system. And they, they are really afraid that you know, as people have said in the past, I think Richard said this is the the black hole of crypto. All the monetary energy is going to get sucked into it eventually. Uh, traditional finance gets sucked into this thing, so they have to push back. So, uh, but anything that we can do will help, and I and I definitely uh, encourage you to to move forward with that, Danny. No expectation of profit from the work of others. This is not a security. You're not buying my time. You're not. None of it. Nothing. None of that. If you want Hex to go better, go make it better. If you want Pulse to go better, go make it better. If you want the code to be better, go make it better. It's on GitHub, GitLab, gitlab.com forward slash pulsechain.com. You ain't gonna get no expectations of profit from the work of others from me. Never, never, ever, 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 ever. Now, by the way, how has that worked out? Seems to have worked out just fine. So, unquote. All right. Now, that's an example of Richard going pretty damn hard. I don't see how anybody could listen to that. And by the way, he said it way more dramatically than I did. I'm just quoting him. But you can see that. Just go to the uh, Richard Hart search engine and, and put in there July 24th, 2021 uh, live stream uh, work of others. And this thing will come up. And it's nasty. I mean, he's pissed. Uh, so, Anyway, there's a lot of arguments that we have that we are not dumb, idiot, potted plants here just waiting to be watered. Danny, I like that, man. I, I, I think I brought that up with BitLaw, too. I said, you know, what's the difference between somebody who launches a cryptocurrency and says, you know, have absolutely no expectations of anything. I don't work for you. This isn't security. And then juxtapose that with somebody who launches a cryptocurrency and then promises everybody the world and says, I'm, you know, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go on this TV show radio show and i'm gonna pump this thing that it's it's a there's a big difference between those two right so, and there were there were times when richard was a little more positive about what might happen to you if you sacrifice but those are balanced by times than they weren't so if they want to quote one we'll quote the other the bottom line is he said the same essence in some cases there might be a little more positive on how it's worked out in the past because that's always where richard went and as a matter yeah. of fact in the court case they went so far as to quote Richard, they, they quoted him directly and they left out half of what he said. So, you know, uh, it, when put in context, okay, so here's what they said. It was item 58 in the court case. The complaint alleges that on August 1st, 2021, via YouTube video he posted during the Pulse Chain offering, Hart claimed that 14,000x is a reasonable estimate for what could be possible for Pulse because that's what Ethereum did, and that's very. this is a very similar thing, but better, unquote. Now, it appears that Richard just said, more or less, you can expect a 14,000x. So, you go to the video, August 1st, 2021. Let me put it in context. It was wildly out of context. All right. Here's what he actually said. OK, I don't make forward looking price statements, but I will tell you what's possible. When I said that Hex was designed to do a 10,000 X when it was invented, it was because I just looked at what Ethereum did. Ethereum did a 10,000 X and we have a superior game theory. So it was just a reasonable estimate of what was possible. Well, if Ethereum did a 14,000 X, which is which it has so far, why can't something that's better do a 14,000 X? And so I think a 14,000 X is a reasonable estimate for what could be possible for Pulse, because that's what Ethereum did, and that's a very similar thing, but better. So that's problem. That's a probabilistic statement of what is the likelihood of that happening. It, no, is this? So is this a probabilistic statement of what is the likelihood of that happening? No. Is this a timing statement about when it might occur? Not really. I mean, I can tell you that Ethereum did a 10,000x in about two and a half years, and it's a 14,000x, so I guess maybe six years. So they're not forward looking price statements but their statements as to what is possible and similar statements yeah, seem Danny, to have worked Danny, out uh, rather Danny, I, I completely I, I don't think that there's any question from anybody in this room that what you're saying is is spot on yeah. it, it's it absolutely is it's just that they don't care about the context they care about building a court case against him and that's why I don't want him to have a jury trial I want a judge yeah. to go, wait a minute, yeah. let's look at this 